addition of airwaves, sequestration preparation. Nather lays out the potential impact of government spending cuts on industry partners. Plus, the Chief of Naval Operations visits Naval Air Warfare Center China Lake. And Nather announces the 2012 Sailor of the Year. Welcome to this edition of Airwaves. I'm Michael Lauren Proof. Nather leadership met with industry partners to prepare for government sequestration. Navair Deputy Commander Gary Newton says he expects to see a 25 percent cut in operations and maintenance Navy funds. He discussed the impact of sequestration on Navair and how federal budget cuts will affect current and future business operations. Navair has not made official decisions concerning possible furloughs of civilian workers. As information is handed down by Congress, Newton assured contractors that Navair will make decisions based on funds available and naval aviation priorities. What we're hoping to be able to do is to make sure that folks understand the situation we're in and offer up ideas on how to get through it. So there's a lot of times where when we have tough challenges uh, supporting naval aviation, if you surround yourself with really hardworking people who are great, good uh, creative minds and you give them a tough problem, they'll come up with some pretty interesting ways to get through it. Uh, so we're hoping that that same recipe applies to this situation and the folks can give us some ideas on how, how to get through this the best way possible. Congress has until March 27th to lay out a new budget, which may include a 9% cut to defense spending each year until 2021. Funding pressures have already impacted the fleet. The Navy has delayed the deployment of USS Harry S. Truman and USS Gettysburg to the Persian Gulf and delayed the overhaul of USS Lincoln. Vital and critical, that's how Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Jonathan Greenert describes Naval Air Warfare Center Weapons Division. The CNO recently visited China Lake to tour the facilities and learn more about the command's unique capabilities and assets. The visit included a walking tour of the Advanced Weapons Laboratory and a discussion about what NOCWD is doing to develop cost-effective solutions and increase speed to the fleet. You get the genesis of the idea, uh, somebody pulls it together, then you test it and you certify it, right here. And that's desperately needed. The brilliance of people in here that come out here to the desert and take their thing on and bring it, you know, from birth all the way through to delivery, that was really uh, impressive. You can read more about the CNO's visit to China Lake by visiting the Navair news page at www.navair.navy.mil forward slash news. Bell Helicopter delivered the 100th Huey to the Marines during a ceremony at the Bell plant in Amarillo, Texas. Major General John Crowley, Assistant Deputy Commandant for Aviation, officially accepted the 100th aircraft on behalf of the Marine Corps. If you would have asked me when I was a second lieutenant reporting in on my first squadron that, that our Marines would have this technology in our hands with this, this kind of lift capacity to do what we do today, I, I, I don't know if I could have imagined that. You have imagined that. It's, it's a great team that we have here. And thank you so much for putting the effort and the innovation into this program. It's paid off and it should strike fear in the hearts of those adversaries of the United States of America. The H-1 helicopter program is comprised of both the UH-1 Yankee Utility Helicopter and the AH-1 Zulu Attack Helicopter. Navair has announced its 2012 Sailor of the Year. The Navair Sailor of the Year is AE-1 Ryan Kirk. Congratulations to aviation electrician's mate, first class Ryan Kirk. He was selected Navair Sailor of the Year during a ceremony at NAS Patuxent River. Kirk, one of three finalists, says he's surprised by the news. It's a shock. <laughs> it kind of, uh, it definitely reflects the work that I've done. Uh, the Chief's Mess has supported me and the support of my family as well. Uh, but I, I'm still kind of, I'm shaking, my nerves are, are a, little, a little rattled. Uh, but it, it, it's not a win uh, by any means. Uh, the two people I went up against were actually uh, I didn't know if I was going to even come close. These folks have exemplified themselves over and over, sustained superior performance, and when we honor them, it just inspires everybody to go farther. It really does. Finalist Aviation Maintenance Administration Men First Class Marsha Ferguson and Naval Air Crewman Mechanical First Class Charles Davis received a Navy Marine Corps Achievement Medal. Kirk will go on to compete for Vice Chief of Naval Operations Shore Activities Sailor of the Year. If you need help navigating NAVAIR, why not ask a mentor to be your guide? As employees attending the NAVAIR Mentorship Fair learned, it's a relationship that offers a roadmap to career success. This is the uh, NAVAIR Mentoring Fair. 
uh, getting people together to not only introduce them to uh, the iMentor uh, updated tool, but also have some speed mentoring, some featured speakers to talk about the importance of mentoring and how mentoring works uh, both professionally and personally to get you where you want to be in life. This is making sure that mentors know about mentees and mentees can go ahead and pick a mentor and they understand the value of it. I am hoping to grow as a professional here in the organization. Also to have like someone that will guide me to perform better and know more about the organization and how it works. Mentoring actually is a lot like dating, so to speak. You may not get the right mentor up front. Um, you may have to, you know, have a conversation, get to know each other, find out whether what they have to offer and you are seeking is a good match. Uh, they did some great upgrades to the tool and I am very excited to like upload my photo and put all the new information and see if I can find a good match for me. They always talk about if you want to be a, an excellent student, be a teacher, you know, you learn more through teaching and mentoring is kind of the same. It, it causes you to reflect upon your own career, your own skill sets, your own successes, your own failures, and how you can learn about yourself as much as you learn about your mentor. Although we may think that nobody has all the answers. So if you can tap into that expertise elsewhere, be it within your organization or outside another part of the organization, uh, that's important. That helps build your toolkit and gives you the ability to be a, a broader, more effective employee, leader, supervisor, uh, anything. It, it works both ways. This kind of relationship will put them more aware about the diversity, cultural challenges, etc. And that way, the organization can grow more. It's a way of raising the tide of performance of each of our folks in all competencies and all disciplines, and it allows people to understand some of the structure that's there on how to improve performance across the entire command. That's it for this edition of Airwaves. See you on the flight ride.